Hi there, now for something just a little bit different. You see I have an Excel spreadsheet open in front of me. What I'm gonna do with this Excel sheet is I'm going to make more circle plotted in Excel. Full disclosure, I normally wouldn't do this, right? But this is being uh, recorded during the COVID-19 issue, right? Which basically means there's a lot of people who aren't in situations where they want, would normally be. And one of those is I have a lot of students who would normally have access to MATLAB, my tool of choice for doing this, and they don't. So I've got some entries here, sigma x, sigma y, tau x, y. Those would be our initial entries. What I'm going to do also is I'm going to copy up tau x, y into these two other locations. The reason for that is when I'm done plotting more circle, I'm going to want to plot a line that connects the initial and and uh, final points essentially so i'm going to uh, i'm going to have those uh, points connected and what i'm going to do actually is not b8 here but i'm going to do minus the tau x y value oops do minus the tau x y value here the reason for that is because we plot the uh, we plot counterclockwise torque counterclockwise uh sorry counterclockwise shear stress below the axis, the horizontal axis, so I'm going to want the negative there. If I have the couple that causes counterclockwise rotation, right, counterclock counterclockwise to me, then I want to have that plotted below the axis. So I'm not going to put any values in for now. I want to put a lot of zeros real quick here, but this equals, the center is equal to, well, it's going to be sigma x plus sigma y divide by 2. The radius is going to equal the square root of a lot of parentheses here. I've got three of them. Sigma x minus sigma y divide by 2. Close the second parenthesis. Square that plus tau xy squared. Okay, so that's the center and that's the radius. So sigma max is going to equal the center plus the radius. Sigma min is going to equal the center minus the radius and the maximum shear stress in the plane. That's going to just equal the radius. Okay, that's great. So now I've got this column for sigmas and tau bigger than zero and tau less than zero. I've got the sigma axis, which is my, which is my horizontal. I'm going to use those as my x coordinates. I'm going to say this one is equal to the minimum, the minimum stress. Okay. And this one below it is going to equal the minimum stress, or not even the minimum stress. It's going to equal the stress above it plus one one hundredth times the difference between the maximum and the minimum. I keep iterating on this, and I'm going to wind up with a hundred points. What I'm going to do here first, though, is I'm going to edit that that to make it so that B13 and B14 are locked in. Okay, this is this is designed to give me, if I pull it down to 100 different locations, this is going to give me the, the beginning and this is going to give me the minimum to the maximum along the horizontal axis. Let's make sigma x equal to 15, whatever unit we have, sigma y equal to 5, and tau x y equal to 8, just to get some, uh, some numbers in here. And I'm going to take all these and I'm going to reduce the number of decimals because gosh knows that's way too many, right? So... My minimum stress was 0 0.57, whatever unit this is. I'm thinking of this as KSI because those numbers look right for KSI to me. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this down. And this should take 100 times, which would get us to, I believe, num cell number 117. The reason we'll know we're good is I've got 19.2453 there. If I scroll back up... I should hopefully come up with 19.43. Hmm. I think I missed by one. I think I need just one more here. There we go. 19.433. So there's my maximum value. Now I'm going to have to be a little careful with some of this because there can be some numerical issues, as they say. It's possible that I could wind up with something that doesn't quite work. And I'll put some protection in against that later. But notice the equation of the circle that I have there. It's x minus the center point squared plus y minus its center point and y squared equals r squared. So my center of my Mohr circle is 
10 KSI in this case, the average axial stress, and zero for shear. So if I solve this for y, the tau value, I'm going to get the square root of r squared minus the quantity x minus the center point squared. So this is going to equal the square root of radius squared. And this is going to be then minus the quantity, my stress here, oops, minus my sigma value here minus the center point sigma value and square that one also. Now again I'm going to have to lock these in because I'm going to have to say that the center value is always going to live in B10 and the radius is always going to live in B11. And then I should be able to take this one and make it equal to negative of what's sitting next to it. Why do I need two of them? Well, the square root function is going to return a positive value, but it could always be plus or minus, right? And I want both halves of the circle. Excuse me. So what I'm going to do then, is I'll take this, I'll double click the box, it'll copy it down. I will hope we don't get any pound sign num errors. We don't. We get a very small value. However, we want to protect against that. It's possible that due to numerical error, I can get a very small number like times 10 to the minus 10 inside this square root that's just barely negative, and then I'll have an issue. So the way I can do this is I can say if, right, I put a conditional in there, is error of all of that, right, and then that is error, I'm going to copy this also for a reason it's going to become apparent in a minute, if is error all of that, Right, so what that's telling us, Excel is going to look and say, is this going to give me an error? If so, give it a zero, because that's what I'm going to want. If not, just use the value. And I could do this for all of these, okay? But I'm only going to do it for two of them, because I'm not going to have an issue for anything except the beginning and the end, potentially. And the reason for that is because the beginning and the end, I might just go a little bit past sigma max due to some rounding. I might go just a little bit below sigma min due to some rounding. And therefore, I'm going to want to have those protections built in. That's all those are there for. Okay, I'm going to highlight all this stuff. And just for the sake of being relatively neat about it, I'm going to cut this down to a couple decimals as well. That should do. Okay. So this is all great. In theory, I've got this set up to plot more circle. Let's actually plot more circle. Okay, so I'll highlight these three columns again. All right, and I will insert a chart. And I'll use a chart I don't use very often, especially those of you who have seen me in a lab course. I'm going to just the solid lines. And I want to move this up a bit. I don't want it sitting all the way down here. I'd much rather have it near where we started. So something you're going to have to play with is unfortunately getting this thing to be more like a circle and less like an oval because the scaling is going to change each time. And there's ways to try to work around that. I've thought about some ways, but I haven't come up with anything good yet. I figured I may as well just show this now, though. I'll delete my legend because I don't really need it. Complete my chart title because I don't really need it. I really don't need it, I should say. And here, if I pull this down, pull this down a little bit more, here is a pretty good representation of Moore's circle. Gives you an idea of what's coming out here. Additionally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two things. One of them, I'm going to take this particular data series, I'm going to format it. I'm going to go to my line options. I'm going to make this line blue. Why is that? So now it looks like one circle, even though I have two charts of data, right? No big deal. The other thing I want to do is I want to add a data series. So right click, choose select data. I want to add a series. I'm not going to give it a name. I don't need it. 
my x values are going to be sigma x and sigma y. My y values, and now you might be seeing why I put the uh, why I put the uh, the shear stresses in here are the x y or sorry are the, are the shear stress values that are sit next to the uh, sigma x and sigma y. So that means that 15 minus 8 that's my x point sitting down here where it should be because my positive shear stress gets plotted below the axis. Okay, let's see if I change this. What's going to happen if I change this to say 28, to say 28 KSI and minus 4 KSI, the tau with a shear stress of 12. And look, we've got ourselves a brand new Mohr circle. All right, that's changed to match. And if we wanted to, we could probably measure the angle off this. We could estimate using a protractor angles off all of this. I mean, I've got a little protractor floating around my desk someplace. It's a little less neat than usual because, well, I've had to move a lot of my office office to my home office, as you can imagine. Again, that whole COVID-19 business. So, but this is something I just want to show that, yes, you can make a more circle in Excel. You can have a look at it. You can manipulate it. And now this this uh, spreadsheet that I have right here, the way that I've set it up, and with the formulas that I have, for example, I'll highlight all of them in turn right now with the last minute or so I'm going to use here. The center formula, based on the input sitting up here, there's your center formula. And, you know, I have my radius formula underneath it, right? You can highlight it. You want to pause and look at it. I'll put it there for a little bit. Maximum is center plus the radius. Minimum is center minus the radius. I won't spend so much time on that. Tau max is the, just the radius. These, these uh, axial stresses, this is defining from left to right, from minimum to maximum. I start off with the minimum value of stress, which I know is the smallest principal stress. And then I go up, I'll highlight this formula, by 1 one hundredth of the difference between the biggest and smallest principal stresses for every step that I go. So I have to copy that down 100 times, right? And hopefully if I've done this correctly, we wind up with 32.00 down the bottom. Again, let's just double check that I've got it right. I should get down to 32.00. And sure enough, I do. The formula's still up there too. That's for B18. And I just copy it down. So this way each row, 106, 107 picks on 106 and adds that difference. 108 picks on 107 and adds that difference. If you wanted to, could you define a variable that was just one one hundredth of the difference? Absolutely, you could. That'd probably be smarter. I guess it just wasn't that bright today. Oh, well. And then I do my formula for the square root. This could appear, this is error part could appear in all of it. Again, all the is error is doing. It's not a trick, but it's possible that because computers round, we can get a very small negative in there when it ought to be zero. Right, very small negative inside the square root, I should say, when it ought to be zero. Excel throws a throws a fit, puts up a hashtag num up there, which basically says, hey, you don't have a number here. I need a number to make the square root work. And then you don't get a plot at all. So what this is error does, I've just put it at the beginning and the end because that's where it's likely to happen. If you put it on each of them, it's not going to hurt either. So if you just put this formula in the first row, copy it down, and again, notice where I have the dollar signs. And then you can put just the negative of it in the second column right next to it. Then you just have to do, go in and plot both those columns. Okay. And I've got the other plot, which consists of just these two data points. If I highlight the, uh, if, I highlight, if, I, if I just clicked on the line, notice how that's just these two data points, X and minus tau XY, sigma Y and plus tau XY. And the circle, the top half is just the sigma column with the tau bigger than zero the bottom half of the circle is sigma with tau less than zero and as i say in the spreadsheet up here i'm just leveraging the equation for a circle okay hopefully this helps you have fun and see if it gives you another way to visualize what's going on with more circle